Hey guys, I'm Jerry Mitchellack. I'm out here on a beautiful day on the range. I got something to show you guys. It's an M1 carbine paratrooper model. Probably one of the most premier firearms of the Special Forces of World War II. This is a new manufacturer. It's made by Inland Manufacturing. It's brand new. It's the folding stock M2 style. It's a semi-automatic. Comes with a 15 round magazine. It's pretty much an exact duplication of the World War II production firearm. They even use the same stain they did in the actual World War II manufacturer carbine. So that's why the wood looks so nice and looks so original because it's exactly like they did in the second war. What's interesting about this firearm, it was the most produced small arms of the, in, the, in the United States inventory. They came into use in 1941. And of course when, in 45, the end of the war, they quit manufacturing the M1 carbines. And by that time they had made like six and a half million of them. And there's like five different variations of the, the M1 carbine. And they're actually made by five different vendors. So you're looking at a platform that's a little under a yard long, weighs over just a hair over five pounds, shoots a 30 caliber 110 grain bullet at about 1950 feet a second, very compact. It was a soldier's friend. Father-in-law told me when he was in combat fighting the Japanese in the Pacific, he said, you saw M1 Garands, you saw Thompsons, you saw BARs on the ground, but you never saw a 30 carbine without a soldier holding it. So anyway, let's go have, have a little fun with it. I've got some 500 Brunel steel targets, guys. These are made by MGM. They're rifle rated, and this is a centerfire rifle. So what you want to do when you do something like this, your target has to be of the same quality to be safe. So this stuff is rifle rated. They actually, uh, we're going to go ahead and shoot them. So. Let's go ahead and crank up a target here. Let's shoot that target on the left six rounds. See what that sounds like. Yo! <laughs> Whoa, that's pretty good, guys. That's just coming out, sighting it in. I didn't even sight it in. All I did with this carbine was put a little Lucas oil on it. Make sure it was going to function. So that was six rounds on target. Give you an idea of what it gave the soldier. It gave them a small package, and the whole idea, going into the Second War, the U.S. government noticed that most non-combat uh, non soldiers, like if you were in a tanker, or you were a truck driver, or you worked on artillery, or whatever, if you weren't in direct combat, you needed a firearm, and the standard issue at the time was the 1911 45 caliber pistol, which was a great firearm in its own right, extremely hard to shoot well and accurate without a lot of training. So. They came up with the idea if they had an intermediate cartridge, like the 30 carbine, that a soldier would be a lot better off with a smaller rifle, something easy to handle, lightweight, and made it more effective in battle. So, and that's exactly what they came up here with, guys. Another interesting thing about 30 carbine ammunition is the fact that it was never manufactured with a corrosive primer. So if you find vintage firearms, they're usually always in very good condition because no corrosive ammunition was ever fired in it. And the way this system work, it has a small tappet here on the front that hits the op rod. So if you had any kind of corrosive ammunition, you would soon foul the, uh, the weapon and it wouldn't work. So never made with corrosive ammo. So most World War II issue guns are still in good, con good condition when you can find them. A lot of them were, were loaned out to different countries after the Second War. The uh, Lend-Lease policy was in effect. Norway, uh, South Korea got a bunch of them, Philippines, so a lot of those are still coming back into, into the United States and you can buy them through the CMP, which is a great organization in itself. So, so there you have it guys, 30 carbine, relatively easy to control. The only thing I have problems with is my old eyes trying to see the peep sight. So I'll tell you what we're going to do, we're going to load it up again and see if we can go left to right, two on each. That's always a fun drill. All right. Let's see if we can get them left to right. Two on each. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> so there you have it, guys. Small intermediate cartridge. Not too much uh, on the same level as a 762 by 39 round, which would be the intermediate Russian cartridge, but a very good substitute for a pistol. And what can you say? Everybody who had them in the Second War loved them, and I kind of like mine. Hey guys, I got the full size version of the M1 carbine. You can see it has a full wood stock on it. This is the latest version. These, these were manufactured toward the end of the war. Had a fully adjustable rear sight. Had a bayonet lug, for what reason I don't know, but in case you need a sharp stick at the end of it. 
It also had a 15 or 30 round mag. In 1943, when they started making a fully automatic version of these, the M2s, they started issuing a 30 round magazine. So you had a lot of horsepower there, guys. You had 30 rounds under your finger. And when you compare it to the M1 Garand, which only had eight rounds, or Thompson, which had a 20 or 25 round stick, you had a lot of horsepower here. And another thing that's really outstanding about the 30 carbine is that it had lightweight ammunition. You had a 110 grain bullet. As you can see, it's a very compact round. You could put a lot of these in your pocket. It doesn't sound like much until you start shooting a lot. And uh, the weight of ammunition really means a lot to the soldier who has to carry this stuff day in and day out. So a compact platform like this, even though it's fully extended, it's still but 35 inches long and weighs a little over five pounds. So there was a good book out by a gentleman by the name of Lieutenant Colonel John George. It was called Shots Fired in Anger. He was a thousand yard Camp Perry championship shooter. So when he went into the second war, what he did for the US Army was to evaluate foreign uh, firearms platforms. So when he was in the Pacific Theater, fighting the Japanese, his carry gun was a 30 carbine, which he had modified with a five round magazine. So it fit flush on the end of the, of the stock here. So when you went to carry it, it was very convenient. And what you want to remember, when a soldier's out in the field, he has to carry this thing in day in and day out. It's his best friend. So the more compact he could make it, and that's what he did. He put a five round mag into it. And he also wrote in his book, if he thought he was going to get into an engagement, first thing that left was the five round magazine and he went back to the 15 or the 30. So. So what you're looking at, guys, is a platform that's a whole lot better for a soldier than any handgun. It's got more effective range. It's easier to shoot. And what you want to realize is a handgun is a great thing, but when you shoot it in a very stressful situation, a carbine is worth three times as much as any, as, as any pistol. So also the cartridge has a more effective range. It's uh, designed to be effective out to 300 yards. So give you an idea on a lightweight gun, what we're going to do on the timer here guys, we're going to shoot that left steel twice, go all the way to the right target twice, and come back to the left. So it's going to be two, two, and two. Have to move oh, about four and a half, five feet in the transitions, and see if we can make these transitions and see if we can keep these, keep these rounds on target and see what it sounds like. Brand new rifle, and uh, let's see what it does. Here we go. What do you say? <laughs> that right there, guys. We're empty. That's pretty good. You see how lightweight comes in the fast target transitions? And you can see it'll be a lot more effective than any, than any pistol round at that distance. So, didn't take a whole lot of time to do all that stuff, guys. So that's the 30 carbine. That's what made it a favorite of the veterans of the Second War, guys. Firepower, lightweight, and a lot of ammunition. Hey guys, I've been a 30 carbine fan forever. This is one I bought back in the 80s. It was imported by Blue Sky. Uh, this is a Saginaw, it's a GM production, uh, 30 carbine. These were available back, I think, for like 280 bucks or something back in the day, 15 round mags. And I went to the CMP. We were shooting down at Camp uh, at uh, Fort, Fort Benning. So shooting three gun matches there. So I'd make a, pa I'd make a point of uh, stopping by the CMP there in Anniston, Alabama few years ago and they actually had 30 carbines. So this is one that I picked up. It's a real nice one. It's a service grade. Still has a sticker on it. So $495. Kind of wish I'd have bought a few of them. But that's a CMP, our current uh, 30 carbine they were selling. Really nice. Also have a few original in the wrapper 30 round GI magazines which are getting rare to find. So these are actually uh, government issue for the M2 carbines still in the wrapper. That's kind of trick. So 30 carbines and I have gone back for a long time. I've shot them. I've enjoyed them. They're just a part of the American history second war guys. It's just a, just a very unique transitional firearm. So fun to shoot. What can I say? Hey guys, what else I want to tell you is that we have a lot more stuff to give away. We've got another JM 930 Mossberg. We have another Vortex Razor 1x6 telescopic sight and also a Razor Red Dot to give away. So all you have to do guys is like us, comment and subscribe and uh, get your name in the hat and we got all this stuff to give you. So thank you very much.